Remember that Study Lab is really a way for students to work with questions and assessment items that have been categorized according to the learning objectives. So this is a student's view and usually when they're in study mode, they have access to topics in class that they can use to practice. So as a teacher, working with the question with the question pages is really one of the best things to do. So while on Question Bank, I have access to all of the questions that Study Lab has. Now, in a typical question, this is a typical question. You have the name of the question, and then where you find this, it means that the question has a video feedback. This is the topic of that question. This is the subtopic. This is difficulty of the question. This is the type of question it is. This, in this case, is a single choice question, and this is the publisher. Um, you can edit a question, you could delete a question if you have the rights to do that, and you can add it to a quiz. This little widget here shows you how many students in your school have answered the question this session and how they have generally fared. So if I click this question, I will see the full question, the name of the question, and then of course if I clicked on feedback, then I would see the video explanation. So let's hit finish here. Now, this is a search bar with which you can search for questions either using the name of the question or the topic or the subtopic or even the description of the, of the question. If you put it in here and you press enter, you'd be able to filter the questions. Now at this point here, we have a filter panel where you can filter either by topic, or first of all, you can filter by subject and then you can filter by topics. Then you can filter by the publisher, so either by study lab questions or WIAC or JAM questions or Cambridge, Olympiad, or by your school. And then you can also filter by what we call scope, in which case, questions that are filtered by only me. In which case, questions that are filtered by only me would be questions that you added and you made private, and in which case, students wouldn't have access to it when they're trying to practice. You could also filter questions by questions um, that everyone in your school has access to, but just people in your school, so we call those local questions. You can also filter questions by what we call public questions, questions that, that we add. Questions that Study Lab adds are public questions and can be seen by everyone everywhere. And then finally, you have questions that only teachers in your school can have access to. So a question that is called only me, students can't have access to it while they do their regular practice, but they can have access to it if you put it in the quiz. So let's just say that I wanted to filter questions in mathematics. So I do that. And then I'm interested in questions on the integration. So I filter by integration. And you can see that now integration questions come up. You can see um, who published them. Let's say I want to look for questions by JAM. So I select this. And then you can see that JAM questions come out. Now look at this button that just went out. That went, look at this button that just lighted, that, that just came alive. If I selected this button, you will find that I have the ability to look at how my class has performed generally in this filter. So if I selected the button and I clicked on, let's say, it's a swan gold or just swan gold, and I clicked on the typical, now, having used this filter, this button lights up. And so if I click this button, it gives me an overview of how students have performed in a particular class. So I could look for, let's say SS1 students, no, no student here, okay. And then this tells me how the students have performed. In this case, students haven't had enough data, but I'm sure in your case, if they've done some work in integration questions that are from JAM, you will see some data and then you can know how they have generally performed. So, to be able to clear filters, I hit this button saying clear all filters. And then I, re I wait for everything to reload. Okay. So, let's search for one question. Let's say we're looking for 
a question called QUEQ029. So I'll come here and I'll say QUEQ029. So let's imagine that I'm looking for a question, and that question has a name called QUEQ underscore 029. So I'd come here, having cleared all filters, I will search QUEQ so 029. Oh, sorry. QUEQ. 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 Q underscore 029. All right, and there is the question. So, because if I select it, then I see the question and then the feedback. Great. Now, let's say that I was looking for a topic in, say, simple interest or common. Yeah, let's say simple interest. So, I'd come here. So, having cleared the filters. All right, I'll say simple interest. Great, and then you can see that questions under consumer matters topic and simple interest come out. Now from this, I can always tell the students, hey, go to study lab, practice questions on simple interest because I know that there are questions there. I could also say, hey, um, go to study lab, practice questions on trigonometric ratios and equations because I know that we have a couple of questions. If you see a question with zero, it means that we don't yet have enough questions there, but you can always add yours. And that's what we'll learn to do in the next video.